from the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for the debate. Arnab Goswami on the debate at 10, powered by Reva University, Policy Bazaar, Kuchina. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion. The world is on edge, ladies and gentlemen. Israel says it will extract a price from Iran when the time is right. America has increased its deployment and moved troops to the Middle East. Iran's attack on Israel, whether in retaliation of the attack on its consulate in Damascus or in retaliation towards a trigger they have waited for, has destabilized the entire region. As I see it, this is a significant moment because Iran, which has through time since its establishment as the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, never got into a direct escalation with Israel. And in that case, this is a first. But to think that Netanyahu will not go with the advice of his war cabinet to respond, to think that he will cave in despite the US being very proactive since the attack is also hoping against hope. He is also under political pressures, domestic pressure. My view is that there will be an Israeli response in some form. But the larger concern is whether this moment will trigger a World War III. Because let's remember, both World War I and World War II began as regional conflagrations between nations. World War I was between two kingdoms before becoming a full-blown international conflict. My view is that we cannot rule out an escalation. We have to watch extremely closely because on both sides are very, very militarized and very, very determined nations. Let's take a look. Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It fired around 350 projectiles at Israel, bringing in a new phase of tension, uncertainty and confrontation in the Middle East. The attack was in response to a suspected Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus earlier this month. In a key rather than a Arzeshe Redome Masulone, the Motanosebe Jomuri Islami Iran, Boshan, the Bejoy and the Hobe Al Foz, the Eborot and Nomotanoseb. Hours after the attack, 17 Indians on board Israeli linked vessel were captured by Iran. Yesterday night, uh, I spoke uh, to my Iranian counterpart. Uh, we, we are uh, making the, uh, the point to the Iranian government that uh, these people should be released, that they should not be detained. You know, I, I would absolutely press for these people to come back to India. Israel has accused Iran of spreading terror. On Saturday, the Iran itself uh, took, uh, you know, overtook a Portuguese boat. Uh, and on that Portuguese boat, because it's an international trading route, there are 17 Indian sailors on it that are now being held by Iran. They're terrorizing the region. They're terrorizing, you know, other countries as well. India shares deep strategic ties with Israel and Iran for decades and it has been able to balance between the two sides. Israel happens to be one of the biggest defense suppliers to India. The partnership between the two countries has upscaled ever since Prime Minister Modi came to power. On the other hand, India's relationship with Iran is older. The Islamic nation, one of India's prime oil supplier. 
Is the Israel-Iran war a new headache for India? Is India caught in the middle again? Let's debate. I have uh, with me the deputy spokesperson of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Israel, uh, Alex Gandler with me to start tonight. Mr. Gandler, in this case, how do you view things panning out? Uh, you know, your, your technology has been very effective against the Iranian missile attack. But, uh, you know, the Iranians are unlikely to let go. Uh, they are also a very determined nation, very militarized. Uh, what options are you looking at if you were to look at the next one week or two days, two weeks, for example? Well, first of all, Arnab, uh, Shalom from Jerusalem. Um, yes, I'm standing here on uh, on my balcony, to be honest. I'm standing here exactly where I stood on Saturday morning at around 1 uh, in the morning, 1.40 in the morning, uh, looking upwards at the sky and seeing projectiles shot over Jerusalem. Uh, this was definitely an escalation, the first time ever in uh, the history of the relations between Israel and Iran, and we did have uh, good relations in the past prior to the Islamic Revolution, uh, that Iran has launched uh, an attack, a direct attack from its territory uh, to Israel. Luckily, uh, we are protected by layers of defense and also by layers of strategical diplom diplomatic defense uh, with our partners uh internationally and uh regionally looking at the future we're keeping all our options open at the moment uh we are listening to all sides we're talking with our american friends who are a strategic pa partner uh and we're thinking about uh, uh how we should respond to this a response will be needed uh because such an attack is unprecedented uh not only for israel this is probably the largest uh, bombardment of aerial drones and ballistic missiles on any country, 300 altogether, some of them uh, very large ICBMs. Uh, so such an attack cannot go unchallenged. Uh, two follow-ups. Uh, first, Alex, you are saying that this cannot go unchallenged, but the Iranian attack was in response to the Israeli airstrikes destroying the Iranian embassy's consular annex in Damascus. Uh, I think that happened on the first and they, it killed or wounded everyone inside. So Iran says that this bombardment of theirs is only a response to the April 1st airstrike. So in a way it's 1-1. One, one. Why take this further? Well, first of all, I can't comment or, or relate to any such bombardment. Uh, from my understanding, it wasn't an... Uh, a consular annex, as someone who has served in diplomatic missions abroad, I'm very well aware of how you uh, describe a consulate or an embassy. From my understanding, that building uh, was a uh, a building that wasn't part of the Iranian embassy. Uh, uh, neither, uh, uh, but one one is not something that uh, we're counting. Uh, I don't think that any nation across the world would have uh, uh, stood still if its uh, land was targeted with 300 missiles, drones, ICBMs, cruise missiles, and so on. Uh, this is an unproportional response or attack by Iran. Um, by the way, in the past, if we're mentioning diplomatic missions, please allow me to uh, talk a bit about history. Uh, in 1990, Iran bombed uh, the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. Um, in the 2000s, uh, most uh, Indian viewers might probably remember uh, the explosion in one of our diplomats' car, injuring his wife, who is uh, receiving treatment to this day. Uh, in 1994, the explosion of the Amiya building in Buenos Aires as well. And the 2012 uh, explosion that killed Israeli tourists uh, in Bulgaria, They're all carried by Iran and its proxies, uh, Hezbollah. Um, Alex, do you think Israel is taking on everyone together? You have a situation, you know, already 
uh, vis-a-vis the situation in Gaza. You have an escalating and long-drawn uh, response from Israel there. Now you're taking on Iran. They say that in conflict, you should not take on all your enemies and potential enemies in one go. But that's what Israel seems to be doing. Yeah, so now, first of all, you're right. Uh, Opening many fronts as strategically against what Clausewitz said. And I think many generals understand that as well. But let's analyze this for a second. Are we opening different fronts or is it the same front? When we're talking about Iran, uh, the way Iran has been operating since the Iran-Iraq war, uh, their strategic understanding was not to fight a war on their soil. Hence, the, they developed a strategy of using proxies. So let's talk about the Middle East and what surrounds Israel. Uh, to the north of us in Lebanon, we have Hezbollah. Uh, to the uh, east, Syria and Iraq, we have Hezbollah and Hezbollah, uh, Tahrir and other factions. You have them also in Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Iran is uh, operating proxies. Uh, Houthis in Yemen and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas are also funded by Iran in Gaza. So uh, if there is a war, and there has been a cold war with Iran for many decades now, it has become a bit warmer. Uh, the fact that they have decided to bomb Israel uh, and shoot all those rockets at us is just an escalation on their part. Uh, we're not looking at uh, different uh, uh, fronts. We're talking about one front, about Iran, and it's not just Israel. Uh, you saw probably uh, that... Uh, during Saturday, a coalition of nations stood up to Iran and what it is doing. It's not just against Israel. What we're seeing is something, uh, belligerency against the entire world. We are just the victim of this specific action. But at the end of the day, the destabilization is all around the world. Uh, you've spoken about uh, the ship that was uh, captured by Iranian special forces carrying 17 Indian sailors. And much more. Houthis attacking yes. ships uh, passing next to Yemen and so on and so forth. This is uh, Iran waging a war against many nations, not just against Israel. Uh, Alex, thank you very much. We'll keep following up from Republic. Thank you very much. That's Alex Gandler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm also joined by General Bakshi right now and uh, Colonel Jonathan Conricus of the Israeli Defense Force, IDF. Along with them is uh, Fatemi Karim Khan, senior journalist live from Tehran in Iran, and Baba Kherawi, journalist and political analyst of the Middle East and Iran. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, Babak, if I can start with you, you heard uh, the deputy spokesperson of the Israeli Foreign Ministry saying there that, uh, that Iran is opening up fronts, it's much more than it seems. It is not a response to the April 1st attack. He seems to suggest that this is uh, the Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthi, everybody and their, uh, whoever they were proxies for coming out in front and taking on Israel directly. Uh, Babak, where do you see this going and your response to what you may have just heard? Uh, hi, so everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. What is happening right now is, the, is another scene of a play uh, began 45 years ago. This is nothing new. Every other year, some such clash through proxies to different countries in Argentina, here and there, has been going on. And the problem at this moment is not Iran, but this is the Islamic Republic regime running the country in Iran. See what I mean? If we cannot separate these two elements, we will never get to the right response at this moment. Any coalition at this time, join to, uh, come together, put all the efforts together, can topple and overthrow such regime, which in its own last election, the turnaround was almost 5%. You know what I mean? Is an unwanted child. If they can do that without even shooting a missile, without even killing a person, we can bring peace back to the Middle East. This is what, how I look at it. Okay, Babak, uh, uh, before I go to Colonel Jonathan Conricus, uh, Fatimi, 350 missiles and drones fired on Israel 
Iran says this was a retaliation to a single attack in Damascus. But the scale of the attack has surprised people. Is Iran looking at a full-fledged war? Does Iran see itself as the leader not. of the Muslim world against Israel? Of course not. Yes. Of course not. Nobody here, nobody here looking for a war. Nobody here looking for a war. Please be careful about your words. We are not the nation who is looking for a war. We didn't start anything here. It was the Israeli army who, who destroyed a building, who destroyed a diplomatic building, who killed several of Iranian people outside our country, outside Iran. It is not a, uh, there is not, uh, there is n it is not a problem of uh, who they are working for or what was the names or what was their, their relation to the government. They kill some of Iranian nationality people. And there, there should be a revenge. There should be a reaction. There should be a, a, um, an answer. There should be a reaction to these kind of things. Uh, we cannot uh, just sit here and see what they are doing against our people. Our uh, Islamic Republic government is not something um, uh, something um, against Iran, against Iranian people. It may do something that we do not like here or there, but it has a rule. It has a. Uh, it is. Um, it is the. It is the. It is the definition of a government to protect their people. And if Israeli, if Israeli people are not happy with what is happening in their in their country, they have to uh, they have to show this. They have to go uh, and uh, show their uh, their disagreement with this uh, politics. No, I'm just surprised at the scale of the response. Colonel Jonathan, let me draw you in here. Why do you think Israel has come out in the op uh, Iran has come out in the open directly? So far, of course, there were the pro proxies, the Hezbollah, Houthi. They were working through proxies, but now there's a direct attack. Uh, what what is the what is the strategic intention here? And what is is Israel going to say? Okay, we are going to hold ourselves back, or is it going to wait for timing? Can it afford to escalate it further? and take on everybody at the same time. Right, thank you for having me. So those are two distinct uh, questions. I'll start with the second one, with what Israel is going to do. I think what Israel is going to do is respond uh, at a timing, location, and uh, intensity of Israel's choosing. It doesn't have to be immediate, and it doesn't have to be against specific targets. Uh, Israel has a very wide and diversified toolbox when it comes to dealing with Iran. Up until now, yes, we have been fighting their proxies. The Iranians very cowardly have been sending forward Palestinians, Lebanese, Yemenites, Syrians, and what have you, in order to fight against Israel. Uh, we are still busy fighting them, by the way. And I can tell you that I myself was surprised that the Iranians actually found the courage to step out of the convenience of the shadows and actually attack Israel straight on. Their attack was a failure and we were able to successfully defend and intercept more than 99% of all of the incoming missiles, drones, and rockets that were fired from Iran, which I am not sure that the guest from Iran is aware of because this is being censored in Tehran by the oppressive media or the oppressive regime against the media. But bottom line is that I think that we, are, we will see in the imminent future, not maybe tonight and not maybe tomorrow night, an Israeli response because obviously such an attack against Israel cannot go unchecked, especially not when it's from a regime that for 44 years have been chanting and forcing their people to chant death to Israel, death to America, death to the UK. I don't know if they've been saying bad things about India as well, but I know for certain that it's been a lot of death wishes to other countries. Of course, we cannot let this slide and we must respond to this type of aggression. Uh, uh, General Bakshi, where do you see this going forward now? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Arnab, there has been a paradigm shift in the situation in the Middle East, as the other uh, speakers have very rightly highlighted. So far, Iran was fighting through its proxies, the three H's, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, 
and the Shia militias in, Sir, uh, in Syria and Iraq. Now it has uh, chosen to fight directly and uh, from what we learn from Iranian sources, they are saying it is in retaliation for the attack on their uh, consulate compound in Syria where uh, you know a number of their top military officials have been killed, total 11 have been killed in that particular strike. And therefore, they wanted to sort of, uh, you know, the United States did a lot to try and deter them, to make them recalculate, recalibre. You know, the uh, the American Central Command Chief, uh, Corilla, he personally came down to Israel. Another aircraft carrier was sent in to deter Iran. The fact is, Iran has not been deterred. And about 320 to 350, there are various estimates, some 170 drone strikes, Shahid class. Then there were the cruise missiles, about 35, and then there were about 120 uh, ballistic missiles which have been launched. Uh, Iran says it has struck the two air bases from where uh, the Novavim air base in southern Israel, from which it claims that Israel had launched the air attack onto its embassy. So that base has been hit and they are claiming the major damage. The Israelis tell us that the damage has been very slight. One girl, I understand, poor girl has been killed and about uh, 12 people wounded uh, total in this strike, right? It came in three waves. The Israeli air defense was superb. It is one of the best in the world and it was aided by the Americans and the British and the French who used their fighter aircraft to shoot down the drones as they came. Israel claims that the drones were just a decoy and they uh, have hit the targets that they wanted. They got through despite these defenses and they are saying that 1.3 billion dollars have been spent by Israel in this defense whereas they have spent very little in, uh, in uh, turn. But they are saying they have finished and the next move is on Israel. Now, to my reckoning, Israel will respond. Though the Americans are putting heavy pressure, let's be quite straightforward, they do not want Israel to escalate. They are saying you were able to shoot down 97 to 98% of the projectiles and therefore you should take it as a victory and call it off because if you uh, give a retaliatory strike, there will be uh, follow-up strikes from Iran. And once this escalatory spiral starts, there is no saying where it will end. It's extremely dangerous, very, very dangerous situation there. And therefore, uh, you know, like our external affairs ministers just spoke to you, there is need for calm, there is need for patience. Uh, I personally think Israel will retaliate because of its own public opinion uh, pressure. But uh, that, uh, based upon American pressure, no, but that may take a covert form. They have done covert attacks uh, earlier on to Israel. Yeah, but you know, they have done the Stuttgart uh, attacks but, but, but on their General Bakshi, facilities. General, and General Bakshi, fact, but yes, General Bakshi, I yes. think, I think, I think what uh, what Iran is not clear about, and Fatimi, don't mind my saying it, you are on very uncertain ground here. And and Fatimi Karim Khan in Tehran. I, I'll bring in my own take here. Fighting a proxy war and fighting a real war are very different. You, as a country, you are experts at fighting proxy wars. Everything for you is a proxy war. Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hamas is a proxy war. You may have been celebrating when the 7th October attack happened on Israel. It was a proxy war. Israel did not attack Tehran. But Tehran was behind the attack on the 7th of October. What you are doing by encouraging piracy in the open seas with the Houthis, one minute, with the Houthis is a proxy war. You tell the Houthis to fire ballistic missiles at I Israeli resorts. You, you tell the Houthis to capture ships. Even the Indian Navy had to respond once or twice and three times and teach the Houthis a lesson. My point being to you, Fatih Mahaji, is that 
you are using Syria, you are using Hamas, Houthi, Hezbollah, but you are not fighting a war yourself. Now you are saying we will fight the war ourselves. Are you ready because your I first attack on Israel has failed? So I, I don't know I whether it will work and I want you to tell Babak, for example, uh, I, I, why, I why you would, no, you know, this Sir, is your proxy. I am, not a, is your. For, I am not a spokesperson for the Everything. Iranian government. I am not a spokesperson for anyone. I just spoke yeah, but, a, a professional journalism yeah. idea here. So I'm not speaking about what Iran is going to do or what it had, had done before. What I'm saying is Iran as a country has every right to protect its people outside and inside the country. We have seen several terrorist attacks from Israelis inside and outside are you, Iran are against you, our scientists. Against are you protecting our your people by... Are you, are, you, are you protecting your people by... One minute, I'll get Babak Haravi into this. Uh, Babak, is Iran protecting its people by supporting the Hamas? By supporting Absolutely and financing the Houthis? Not. By supporting Absolutely piracy in the open not. seas? They are killing their own Babak people. Babak Haravi, they responding are, to Fatemi. They are, killing their own people. they are starving their own people by just sending the hard-earned currency to all these terrorist groups from Africa, uh, Boko Haram, uh, name it, Kataev. In, in, in Iraq, there are three types of, of these groups. Uh, uh, Najaev and Kataev, whatever. You go to Yemen, you go to Syria. War in Syria was financed by the Islamic Republic. Okay? There is a reason when the inflation in Iran right now at this moment is over 10,000%. What is the reason? Because all the hard-earned money is being pumping through all the channels to the terrorists to purchase, to buy arm, to buy like ammunition, to buy all the equipment, explosives, and kill innocent people. It's as simple as that. There's nothing around it. Sir, Islamic Republic is Iran, not sorry, protecting You cannot blame Iran for whatever happened in and outside the regime. It is not, it, there is not, it, Iran is not responsible for whatever terroristic a attack inside and outside. It, that's okay, that's maybe what she there says. Is that's some not type. the reality. There is some type, that's not the reality, ma'am. No, no, no. This is the regime's propaganda you're repeating. This is the parrot style. No. When Iran is financing, Bassem Soleimani was the head of financier of all the terrorist groups in uh, Iraq. All Shia Muslims. When your own minister said, uh, at the time of Saddam Hussein, we just purchased thousands of bombs. His interview is out there. And we distributed all over southern Iraq. Before the war. This is terrorism. This is spreading terrorism. This is bedding for terrorism, for killing are innocent people. Speak about the the, are we going to speak about what is happening right now between Iran and Israel? Right Dubai, now, or we are going right to now let me tell you. Why do you go to a consulate? You tell me what is a consulate. Why a person would go to a consulate to obtain visa, to get legal help, to get uh, help to go back to his country, etc., etc. For what for what are high-ranking IRGC no generals right are doing in that consulate? The country. What, what are they doing there? What are they cooking there? Is, is it not terror? The reason is, uh, Syria is let, not let, let, country, let me finish. Sorry, let me finish. Let me finish. You are not answering. For whatever the reason, Iranian nationalities are outside the country or inside. For whatever reason, no other country has the right to Hold kill on them. A second. Do you know what IRGC stands for? IRGC. Do you know what what does it stand for? Huh? Islamic Republic Guard Corps. There's no Iran in it. Okay. IRGC, the moment established, its name is Sepahe, Pastorane, Engelob Islam. No is Iran. Not, about Iran's not even history. in the name. The how, how come is not you about call him Iran? I'd like to. Let me just get in, Colonel, Colonel Jonathan, in this, please. Colonel Jonathan, if I, can, if I can get you into this now. Colonel Jonathan, Colonel Jonathan, we were waiting for, I mean, the world is waiting for the 
situation in the Middle East to settle down. And this is going to cause a lot of global concern. Therefore, the Americans will put in pressure as well. This is not good for the global economy if this conflict truly escalates and spins out of control. So have the Americans managed to convince you to pull back a little? You can make the statements but not take it any further. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, sometimes, you know, when you have a bad tooth, uh, you need to endure some pain in order to get it out. And the fact that you're going to endure some pain with the dentist doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It is a necessary minor evil in order to deal with a bad situation. And in this metaphor, the bad situation is Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, its actions, its state sponsoring of terror, its belligerent activities across the entire Middle East, specifically against Israel, but not only in Israel, overturning local uh, regimes in Iraq, uh, strifing uh, sectarian violence in Syria and in Lebanon, and fueling civil war in Yemen, and of course funding terrorist organizations in Gaza. So the fact that many people prefer quiet now I think, you know, when you have, when, when there's a problem, when your tooth is aching, you don't want quiet. You want to take care of the issue and you want to make sure that it doesn't become any worse. That's where we are now. That's where Israel is. And for all of the people who are saying, telling Israel that you must or that you should exercise caution and restraint, we have been extremely restrained for decades. For 44 years, the uh, mullahs in Iran have been screaming death to Israel. And for many decades, they have been arming and equipping terror organizations against us. Many Israeli civilians have died at the hands of Iranian weapons provided to Hamas, Hezbollah, and others. And I think that enough is enough. Israel needs to break free of this uh, noose of terror organizations that Iran has funded and placed along our borders. And it is high time that we take the opportunity now when finally Iran has summoned the courage to step out of the shadows to actually confront Iran. There are many targets in Iran and there are many things that Israel can do. And what I would think that Israel will be doing is either going after the nuclear program or going after Iran's capacity to, to continue to fund these malign terrorist activities across the Middle East, so as their sourcing equipment, for instance, ports where uh, oil is uh, exported from and petrochemical products are exported from, by the way, violating international sanctions. Um, and maybe that will be a target. But whatever happens, I do not think that Israel will let this slide. Whatever countries and organizations, and even our closest friends will tell us and ask us to do, I think that once Iran fired 350 rockets and missiles, we cross that Rubicon, and this aggression must be met with a firm, clear Middle Eastern response. Well, this, this uh, without doubt uh, is going to escalate. Uh, viewers, for those thinking of this as new, look at it another way. What is happening now is only a formalization of what has been a battle ongoing between Israel and Iran. It is just that Iran has worked through proxies so far and now it is coming out in the open. But when it does, governments and militaries get involved, so it takes on a very different dimension from when Iran can blame it on non-state actors. Viewers, I'll take a quick 30-second Securite commercial break. See you on the other side. Thanks to all my guests. Thank you. Kane, sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mm hmm. Easy to clean. For plates? Kane, bye. It's a tile lad. Uh, I am plus technology, Simone. World class tiles. Tile ho, the simple You can sense the पता नहीं क्रिकेट का फ्यूचर कैसा होगा पर सीलिंग फैंस का फ्यूचर पता है बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी हियर ओरिएंट एरोस्लिम विथ रिवर्स रोटेशन मोड जो इंप्रूव करे एयर सर्कुलेशन ओरिएंट पीएलडीसी फैन द फ्यूचर
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A Pakistani underworld dawn who killed Indian national Sarabjit Singh in jail was assassinated by two unknown gunmen, completely unknown gunmen in Lahore on Sunday. He was attacked by the motorcycle-born unknown assailants at his home in the Islampura area of Lahore. While the motive behind the shootout remains a mystery, Pakistan has squarely blamed India, calling it a targeted killing. Take a look at the development so far before our last debate on the unknown gunmen who have killed this terrorist. Eleven years after Indian prisoner Sarabjit Singh died in Pakistan jail after being brutally assaulted by prisoners. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, accused in the murder of Sarabjit Singh, was shot dead by unidentified gunmen in Lahore on Sunday. उन्होंने पापा पे उस टाइम पे हमला करके उनको बुरी तरह से गायल कर दिया था जेल में उसके बाद उनकी वहाँ पर मौत हो गई थी पाकिस्तान की जेल में ही उनमें से एक जो शख्स था उसको कल गोलियों से मार के उसकी हत्या की गई है कुछ मीर सरफराज जिस पे मैं यही कहना चाहती हूँ कि जैसे हम कहते हैं कि कर्मों का फल यहीं पर ही मिलता है ये उसके कर्मों का ही फल है लेकिन इसके साथ ही मुझे लगता है एक बहुत बड़ी साजिश भी है ये पाकिस्तान की ही सरकार की तरफ से क्योंकि ऐसे ही हो सकता है बहुत सारे राज हों जो उनको लगता हो कि बाहर ना आ जाएं दुनिया के सामने तांबा वॉज अ क्लोज एसोसिएट ऑफ लक्शर एबा फाउंडर हाफिज सईद सोर्सेज से तांबा एंजॉयड ऑल फेसिलिटीज ड्यूरिंग हिस्स जेल टर्म Pakistan has blamed India behind the attack on Amir Sarfaraz. मैं कल इंडिया में देख रहा था एग्जैक्टली इस तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ हुआ है वहां तो इतना बड़ा हमने नहीं देखा कि उन्होंने उसको एग्जैक्टली इसी तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ है आप देख लें मैं आपके साथ वो शेयर कर लूंगा क्लिप लेकिन हमने उसको 15 दिन से 10 दिन से उसको इतना बड़ा इशू बना दिया कि क्या हो गया This even as the world has rejected Pakistan's claim. I've uh, been following the media reports about this issue. We don't have any comment on the underlying allegations, but of course, uh, while we're not going to get in the middle of uh, the situation, we encourage both sides to avoid escalation and find a resolution through dialogue. Why is Pakistan shifting the blame on India for alleged targeted killings? Let's debate. Uh, Sundus Mustaqeen is a Pakistani journalist from Islamabad taking on God of Arya. Uh, Ms. Mustaqeen, can you uh, can you tell us why the Pakistani terrorists, uh, the Pakistani criminals, are in the middle of these gang wars these days? You know, one gang killing another gang, one gang member killing another gang member, one terrorist killing another terrorist. We have seen increased killings by terrorists of terrorists. So, how do you analyze this? Why is this happening? Ji, uh, thank you for having me in your program. And you said terrorists are killing terrorists. Is this making any sense when we say terrorists are killing terrorists? If this is the case, this is the I was, I would say the lucky case ever. Uh, if terrorists has been killing terrorists, I think we are accusing and blaming India. And it's not just Pakistan who is blaming India of killing people in uh, in our country, but actually four countries, including Pakistan, the U.S., the Canada, and even the Great Britain. All these four countries are accusing and blaming India for the target killings. You know, they, the Canadian Prime Minister uh, is on the same view. The uh, uh, U.S. State Department is on the same view. Even the investigation are going on in U.K. as well, right? It's not only Pakistan who is blaming India for these killings, actually. So three you're other different that, countries in you're a. You're saying that we are, no, but you know, you have no proof. According to the you international have, have, media, there the is no proof people, of this. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is, there is, there has to be some, there has to be some, there has to be some proof behind this. This new theory that you are putting out 
every it's day coming up with a new the theory that India is involved in killing this person. Singh has said this with so much of confidence, actually. At one time, at, uh, on the uh, at one side, your uh, foreign minister has been denying, and on the hmm. other side, on the flip side, your uh, defense minister Rajnath Singh is uh, is was on the same way with so much of confidence that yes, we no, are no, killing and we will that. keep on killing uh, no, people no, in, inside that. the you country have, and you Pakistan. Have, have so I think no, no, he's so not said that. Let me let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. One one minute. One minute. One minute. Right. Rajnath, Singh has, said, Rajnath, Rajnath, Rajnath Singh has said Rajnath Rajnath Singh she has said no 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 Sundar ji Rajnath Singh ji has said ki hum ghar mein ghus kar marte hain exactly hum marenge Gaurav will explain he said marenge uh, yeah Gaurav can so Gaurav can explain ek minute ek minute even ek, your ek, pm has said ek, that india has so much yeah. power means and directly he is predicting that yes we can do that yeah. he is admitting actually that yeah. yes we can do that and it's yeah. not admitting actually yes. yes we can do that yes the habit Yes, we can do that, and we have done it. We have. Canada allowed to Great Britain. No, we have. We have done it, but. 2019, India is on the. So if you are saying that it's moved towards the target killings of either Sikh leaders or Pakistani so-called terrorists or whatsoever. So India is now habitual of killing people, and USA and Pakistan and what's up. You know, the Khalistan Tehreek. India is. Killing people, sick, sick leaders in USA and even the New York, and you just deny when it comes to such. So it's all right if you if you if you feel this way. I have a Sundarji, Sundarji. If you feel this way, if you if you genuinely feel this way, I'll I'll pass it on to Gaurav to respond to you. देखिए देखिए ये तो कोई दो राय नहीं है Sundarji. Gaurav भी आपको कहेंगे कि हम कहते हैं कि नया भारत है हम हम मारते हैं. हम घर में घुस कर मारते हैं नया भारत है हम अप्रोच है अप्रोच है कि हम घर में घुस कर मारते हैं जैसे हमने बालाकोट में मारा हमने मारा आप नहीं मगर ये मगर ये जो छोटी मोटी घटनाएं आप क्या हो रही है उसके साथ हमारा क्या लेना देना गौरव विल रिस्पॉन्ड टू यू गौरव गौरव उषमा करदार ऑफ द पी एम एल एन इज ऑल्सो देर यू नो यू वुड यू लाइक टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस व्यू ऑफ द पाकिस्तान इज दैट वी आर किलिंग they are terrorists on their soil no oh, no uh, i don't think we are killing anybody and whatever action we have taken this ghar mein guske marna it relates to balak yeah. and the surgical strikes that is point number 1 point number 2 have you realized one thing very funny correct that is point uh, harjit singh nejjar dies uh, and as very rightly brought out by the pakistani panelist you know everybody gets very offended that india has you know india has done it india has done it india has done it everybody but when the americans are asked about the pakistanis 20 pakistanis getting killed the americans say we have no comment so basically in the world nobody cares if pakistanis die have you noted this the american spokesperson said we don't know anything about this we don't want to comment one canadian citizen dies everybody is very conscious though they don't yeah. have proof till now so many months have passed but justin trudeau has not offered 1% proof he should have given the proof he should have so called quote unquote yeah. exposed india in front of everybody yeah you see they should have done it and the pakistanis should do it But they are not doing it. But twenty yes, Pakistanis sir, get killed. Yes, madam, just hold on. Madam, just hold on. Allow me to. Madam, you should not interfere when you were speaking. I kept quiet. So, madam, have a little bit of manners, madam. This is an Indian TV channel, not a Pakistani channel. Hold on. So, essentially, what has happened is, no, don't do this. It's coming to you right now. Hold on. So, what has happened is, in Pakistan's case, when the American spokesperson was asked. You know what are your comments? The Pakistanis are saying, according to this Guardian story, that the so Indians have so-called killed twenty Pakistanis, and he said, "I don't care. Nobody cares about dead Pakistanis. I mean, even Pakistanis don't care about dead Pakistanis. They are creating a human cry about twenty Pakistanis killed. More than eighty thousand Pakistanis have been killed by Pakistanis in terror attacks, and they don't care. So, Arnab, this is just a sham. You can ask both the ladies on the screen. It's just a sham. This is just Pakistan's excuse of asking money from India. In the end, they last. दे लास्ट मनी हम चुप हो जाएंगे थोड़ा सा पैसे दे दीजिए अभी शहबाज शरीफ गया था वहां पे भीख मांगने के लिए सऊदी अरेबिया दे वुड एंड अप आस्किंग मनी अर्नब दैट इज देयर नेशनल एक्सपर्टीज ये एक ही काम में फिट है ये लोग पैसा मांगने के ये मांगने वाले हैं कहीं आपके शो में ना मांग ले मुझे डर लग रहा है आप पूछ लीजिए अर्नब अगर चाहिए तो मैडम आपसे बात नहीं कर रहा मैं आई एम टॉकिंग टू अर्नब अर्नब इज द एंकर ऑफ द शो आई एम टॉकिंग टू अर्नब आई आई वांट टू ब्रिंग इन उस्मा करदार आई आई वांट टू ब्रिंग इन उस्मा जी वन मिनट आई लेट मी ब्रिंग इन उस्मा जी उस्मा जी सी 
making allegations against <coughs> India that we are killing your terrorists. I was speaking to the foreign minister about a week back, the Indian foreign minister, and he said, and he rightly said, he said, who are these people who Pakistanis are complaining are being killed? In ka biodata kya hai? In what is their profile? Who are they? Are they businessmen? Are they diplomats? Are they bureaucrats? Or are they all terrorists? This is something, Uzmaji, you must also think about. You see, everyone in the world is asking you. You are going around the world saying that you've killed our terrorists, you've killed our terrorists. Nobody is responding to you. First of all, therefore, my first point which I want you to respond is, there is no moral argument here. You can go to London, you can go to Ottawa, you can go to Auckland and say, our own terrorists, our own terrorists, they are killing someone. So, people will say, whatever you are killing, they should say thank you. But you are complaining that our own terrorists, who we have given us, who we have given us so much support, so much training, who we have given to India, who we have given to India, who we have given to them. So, people will say, you should be thanking people. Your biggest problem, Uzma Ji, today is terrorism. So whoever is killing your terrorists, I'm not saying there is one person, one individual, one country, one company. But you should be grateful to them. But you're not even grateful, you're complaining. That's point number one. Point number two, and you can respond to both. You are saying we are behind it. If you say that we are behind it, you have to come to us. You have to go through the diplomatic channels. You have to file a proper complaint, send it through the diplomatic channels, take it through the bureaucratic channels. Let it go through the police channels and the investigative channels. It may take about 10, 20 years, but we'll get back to you. Just say, you did it, right? After 26, 11, that you respond to us, you give us information. Believe me, we will get back to you. Maybe not in 2024, by 2034, 2044, 2054, we will respond to you. But you must have belief in the system. Right? So okay. first thing, uh, now first question, why don't you thank the people who are killing your terrorists? You and second, why don't you take it through the proper channels? Okay. Yeah, sort of now, for the I moment, think, yes. Uh, yes. I think for the that, uh, uh, you know, the Indian side is now so frustrated that uh, they just want to uh, pile the blame of everything that goes wrong in their own country on other people. Uh, you people should actually worry about your uh, image in the world internationally. Everybody is now saying that India is exporting terrorism uh, in different parts of the world. And you have Justin Trudeau in Canada. You have the U.S. Uh, uh, officials in the in, uh, State so Department. Delusional. They have uh, uh, Justice Trudeau on the floor of the parliament has said that uh, we will not allow anybody to hit uh, any of our citizens on our own soil. And Hajit Singh and uh, uh, other uh, you know, Sikhs have been targeted. Uh, and uh, you people have not cooperated in any kind of investigation uh, and, and you have not even, uh, uh, you know, cooperated in the U.S. Uh, 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 plan to assassinate a U.S. citizen uh, in, uh, on their soil. Uh, the State Department wanted you to uh, cooperate in investigation and they said that we have uh, uncovered an assassination plot which you people uh, made, which Raw made in, in, uh, in, in, in the U.S. But you guys are totally, you know, you have your uh, um, head, uh, you know, under the sand and you are totally denying the export of terrorism. In Pakistan, this has been going on for years now. It's been going on for decades. Your, uh, what about Kalbushan? Who was Kalbushan? Where was he found? And what was he up to? So, uh, you know, this is the ne there, there have been about 20 targeted killings. Uh, and we have uh, 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 the, the same pattern we see now in Amit Tamba's death also. Targeted, targeted killings of killing. whom? Targeted no, no, no. Uzma ji. Uzma ji. Uzma ji, let, me, let me put the question to you out of that the Honorable Foreign Minister was, uh, was asking me. And he said, or no, next time you're with a Pakistani panelist, they, they you ask them, who are escape. these people? I, you have said 20 targeted killings. Uzma ji, can 20, you tell me the biodata? Can I you tell me the, the biodata of the these four, 20 the eminent four, citizens? Recent ones, who was are these 20 people? Uh, who was from, uh, who was the leader of Jaish Muhammad in Dashka? 
Now you listen to what Why we are doing have to this? say. Uh, in June 2021, there was a car bombing I'm, I'm outside the residence of I'm just surprised that you are supporting a terrorist Sain. group. So and there were multiple man. casualties Arnab. there. Multiple Arnab. casualties Arnab. there. And Arnab. Rome was uh, uh, involved Arnab. In, in, Arnab. in that as well. Arnab. So we Arnab. have Arnab. evidence. We have evidence. Arnab. The point Arnab. is that you people, you people keep denying. You people don't cooperate. Uh, uh, we are very very sure there is an investigation going on our interior minister they had a press conference this guy has the fact that it's the same and we we, we, uh, we feel that uh, there is a suspicion on India on, uh, on, on wrong that they are involved in his killing as well That is why Imran Khan, on the floor of the parliament, called Osama bin Laden. You should ask them. Let's let us see. In case, so now, let us see. You have to answer to the whole world. In case, it's not in just Pakistan that you have Arnab. to answer to. You have yeah, to, to answer to Madam, all these other countries where you are carrying on uh, these uh, terrorist activities. Why were you in FTF? You are killing people there. Why were you in FTF? Why was your country 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 We don't no, want you to kill terrorists. India. Yourself. You kill them. Uzma ji. You kill all their leaders. Madam, Uzma ji. Madam, Uzma ji, you are just an English-speaking terrorist. You see, <coughs> you are in FATF for four times. Why are you being put in FATF four times? Because you support That's terrorism. That's a problem. That's a problem. We are no, out of the race. That's What another. No? That's are another it? slap in your are face. That's you another reason FATF. why you guys are so <laughs> frustrated. You have been in FATF. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. You seem to be very proud of it. आप तो कहते हैं मैं एक बार और डालो. आपको तो मजा आने लगे हैं टेररिज्म से. हम तो हम तो आप हैं नहीं ना आप आप प्रॉब्लम इसके आप लोगों ने आप लोगों ने प्रोपगेंडा कर करके प्रोपगेंडा किया पूरी दुनिया में आप तो प्रोपगेंडा उठा पड़ गया. वो तो आप भी उठी पड़ गई सब तक गिरे और हम तो हमें एफएटीएफ से हम निकल गए ग्रेलेस से तो अब आपको क्या प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है यू डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू सच बताइए नोबडी इज लिसनिंग द वर्ल्ड इज नॉट लिसनिंग टू यू एनीमोर बिकॉज़ यू आर एक्सपोर्टिंग टेररिज्म टू द होल वर्ल्ड आप एफएटीएफ की ग्रेलेस में थे कि नहीं आप एफएटीएफ की ग्रेलेस में चार बार थे कि नहीं हां या ना अरे भाई वो आप लोगों के प्रोपेगेंडा की वजह से मत करिए हाँ या ना बोलिए दुनिया में जाके लॉबी करते हैं आप खरीदते हैं लोगों को जाके बाय और उसे ये कितना झूठ बोलते हैं पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ एवरीबॉडी नोस दैट पाकिस्तानियों की जो अपने बच्चों से झूठ बोलते हैं ये लोग अपनी गलत हिस्ट्री पढ़ाते हैं अरे आप पूरी दुनिया से बात के झूठ बोल रहे हैं आपको पैसे खिलाते हैं और उसे उसे झूठ बुलवाते हैं लेकिन आप देख लें अपने ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड क्या है आप ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेट करते हैं पूरी दुनिया में लेकिन इंडिया वालों को पता चल गया आप वालों को जो ह्यूमन राइट्स जो कमेटी है उसके रिपोर्ट पढ़ ले जाके आपको पता चल जाएगा क्या आप इंडिया का वहां पे नॉन टेररिस्ट फेस एवरीबॉडी नोस पाकिस्तान इज अ टेररिस्ट कंट्री चार बार ग्रिलेस्ट में नो 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 व्हाट इज दैट इज समथिंग व्हाट इज दैट 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 कम बैक दैट का क्या मतलब है यू नो डायरेक्टली टू इंडिया नाउ द होल वर्ल्ड लाइक इट ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है डज नॉट ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है इन 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 एनी अदर कंट्री ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है दे डू नॉट वायलेट ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है ऑफ एनी अदर सॉन्ग ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है इंडिया दैट इज डूइंग इट ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है लॉज हम विश्वास करते हैं मेरी बात सुनिए उमा जी गौरव 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 सुंडोस जी उमा जी दिल्ली में हम ऐसे कहते हैं दिल्ली में दिल्ली में हम हम दिल्ली के लोग ऐसे कहते हैं उमा जी आपके हम घर में घुसकर मारेंगे उमा जी उमा जी हम घर में घुसकर मारेंगे जरूर मारेंगे अपने समय से मारेंगे खूब मारेंगे 
जैसे करोगे वैसे करोगे यही हमारा अप्रोच है नया भारत हमारा नया भारत है अभी आप आप हम कितनों को मारेंगे कब मारेंगे आपको मैं वो पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान एक्सट्रीमली कंसर्न एक्सट्रीमली कंसर्न अबाउट द सस्पिशियस किलिंग्स ऑफ टेररिस्ट और इट सॉइल we don't know which unknown people are carrying out these unknown killings it is all completely unknown i'll see you tomorrow at 9 good night and goodbye in the india today best universities 2023 survey India's number 1 ranked universities in various streams are JNU Delhi, Amity University, Ames Delhi, IIT Delhi and National Law School Bengaluru. Kane sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mhm. Mm Easy to clean. But plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. Ah. आई एम प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी से बने वर्ल्ड क्लास टाइल्स टाइल हो तो सिंपल हो इन जस्ट अड इंडिया हैज ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू अ डिजिटल पावर हाउस फ्रॉम क्लास रूम टू क्लिनिक्स फार्म टू फिनेंस डिजिटलाइजेशन इज रेवल्यूशनाइजिंग एवरी आस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ टू सेलिब्रेट द मेकर्स एंड शेकर्स बिहाइंड डिजिटल इंडिया एंड इंडिया फिनोमिनल डिजिटल यात्रा Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award. Kane sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mhm. Mm Easy to clean. But plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. Ah. I am plus technology se bane world class tiles. Tile ho to simple ho. You can sense the excitement. पता नहीं क्रिकेट का फ्यूचर कैसा होगा पर सीलिंग फैंस का फ्यूचर पता है बिकॉज इट्स Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand brings you the latest breaking news updates from across the country only on Republic TV and I am Rakshita Mishra Kane sir your dinner on a tile and it's antibacterial mhm mm easy to clean but plates can buy it's a tile lad I am plus technology se bane world class tiles टाइल हो तो सिंपल हो इन द इंडिया टुडे बेस्ट यूनिवर्सिटीज 2023 सर्वे इंडिया नंबर वन रैंक्ड यूनिवर्सिटीज इन वेरियस स्ट्रीम्स आर जे एन यू डेली एमिटी यूनिवर्सिटी एम्स डेली आई आई टी डेली एंड नेशनल लॉ स्कूल बेंगलुरु सर योर डिनर ऑन अ टाइल अरे इट्स एंटीबैक्टीरियल Rats resistant also. But plates? Can buy. It's a tie lad. From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate.
Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Is that Arvind Kejriwal has not got any immediate relief in the Supreme Court of India. But rather this entire matter is going through you know the process. The ED has been given a notice. There will be a reply from the other side and now what has happened is effectively the Supreme Court has denied any quick relief for Arvind Kejriwal. I think the matter is unlikely to be resolved soon. The prospect therefore of a longer time in jail for Arvind Kejriwal is a certainty. In my view Delhi at this stage with Kejriwal in jail and continuing in jail for some time at least needs an interim chief minister. Delhi cannot operate in an arbit way. Delhi cannot have nobody in charge and Delhi cannot be run from Tihar jail. The moral argument of trying to look like a martyr the moral argument of trying to look like a martyr by being a chief minister from jail will not help the people of Delhi but more importantly across the country it will set a terrible precedent. What if the chief ministers of many other states of the country larger states are all in jail. If Kejriwal does not come out of jail for six months for example will the government run like this for the rest of the year as well. Personally I don't think the centre will disturb the situation or thrust the imposition of president's rule. Therefore this is rather a question the courts must take up and since the courts take up so many issues anyway Suomoto they should guide the nation on whether running a government from jail is a precedent that we the people of India should live with. Debate number one tonight viewers absolutely no relief in liquor gate for Arvind Kejriwal. His judicial custody gets extended. I have Harish Salve joining me on that debate as well. I have a full debate on it. Salve is joining me right on top of the show at 9 p.m. tonight. And as retired judges and lawyers make explosive claims and tell the Chief Justice of India not to come under pressure, what's the real story surrounding the Supreme Court of India? What kind of pressure is being put on the country's highest court and how is the country's highest court responding to it? Former Solicitor General Ranjit Kumar is joining me on the debate at 9.25. At 10 o'clock tonight, the world on the edge amidst growing concerns over the escalation in the Iran-Israel conflict. That debate is at 10 p.m. tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Sarabjit killer is shot down on Pakistani soil. Divine providence, but Pakistan accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved. That's at 10.30 p.m. And here are the headlines. This Monday evening on the debate tonight. Three days before the first declaration of the declaration. So, the negative अनुमानों के आधार पर सारा G20 गतिविधि की कोशिश होती है। मैं इसको किसी भी हालत में चौका देना चाहता हूँ। Prime Minister takes on the Western media lobby, says India does not need to be lectured on democracy. कांग्रेस को पूछना चाहिए कि तुम्हारी क्या मजबूरी है? ये सनातन के खिलाफ इतना जहर उगलने वाले लोगों के साथ तुम क्यों बैठे हो भाई डीएमके का तो जन्म शायद इस नफरत में पैदा हुआ होगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी शार्प रिटॉर्ट टू सनातन बेटर्स सेज द डीएमके वाज बोर्न आउट ऑफ हेट्रेट फॉर सनातन नो रिलीफ फॉर लिकर गेट अक्यूज्ड अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड के कविता as their judicial custody gets extended till the 23rd of April. We found that this was a very disturbing trend. That you, uh, whenever decision comes against you, you try to pressurize the court so that next decision is in your favor. For the first time ever, judges unite against the lobby call out attempts to pressurize the judiciary in another letter to the Chief Justice of India. India gets access to Indian crew on board seized Israeli ship in Iran as Jai Shankar dials his Iranian counterpart. 
and Sarabjit's killer shot down on Pakistani soil, but Pak accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved in the killing. Ladies and gentlemen, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal or the Aam Aadmi Party cannot wash away the liquor gate taint against his name anymore. Today, the jailed Delhi Chief Minister suffered back-to-back -back setbacks in two courts. On the one hand, the Delhi Rouse Avenue Court extended his judicial custody till the 23rd of April. And all he got in the end was a later date for the hearing. The Aam Aadmi Party has been alleging political vendetta. But he's got no quick relief from the Supreme Court heater which is going through the matter quite procedurally, as it should. Let's debate. Two courts, one man. The focus was back on Delhi excise policy scam kingpin Arvind Kejriwal. It was another round of back-to-back -back setbacks for Arvind Kejriwal in two courts. On one hand, the Rouse Avenue court extended his custody till April 23rd. On the other hand, the Apex court refused an early hearing plea challenging ED's arrest. The Supreme Court gave the Enforcement Directorate time till April 27th to file its response to the ARP leader's petition. Likagate accused Arvind Kejriwal was arrested on March 21st, but his jail stay in Tihar will continue till April 23rd. While the Delhi court extended Kejriwal's judicial custody, Singhvi made some scathing submissions seeking an early hearing in the Supreme Court. During the hearing today, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, appearing for Mr. Kejriwal, told a bench of Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice Dipanka Datta he had facts to shock the conscience of the court. He also hit out at selective leaks all over the place to discredit the Chief Minister, an extremely short date to begin hearing the petition. The court, though, refused the plea. Earlier today, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan also met Arvind Kejriwal in the Tihar jail. After the meeting, Maan claimed that Kejriwal wasn't given adequate facilities to meet his family members. Despite the Enforcement Directorate's kingpin tag and key conspirator tag on Kejriwal, Maan continues to decry the arrest, calling the Delhi Chief Minister Kattar Imandar. ये जो चीज है ये बहुत ही इनको महंगी पड़ेगी क्योंकि अरविंद केजरीवाल जो कट्टर ईमानदार है जिसने पारदर्शिता की राजनीति शुरू की बीजेपी की राजनीति खत्म की उनको ऐसे ट्रीट ट्रीट किया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी जो है एक सोच का नाम है अरविंद केजरीवाल एक व्यक्ति को तो गिरफ्तार कर लोगे सोच को कैसे करोगे आम आदमी पार्टी हैज ऑल्सो अनाउंसड द फेज 2 ऑफ जेल का जवाब वोट से अक्रॉस फोर लोकसभा कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज ऑफ द नेशनल कैपिटल देखिए लोकसभा चुनाव को लेकर के ऑलरेडी सभी राज्यों में कैंपेन चल रहा है दिल्ली के अंदर भी जेल का जवाब वोट से कैंपेन शुरू हो चुका है आसाम के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है कुरुक्षेत्र के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है अभी मान साहब का वहाँ रोड शो हुआ है फॉर नाउ देर इज नो रिलीफ फॉर दिल्ली का गेट क्यूज केजरीवाल इश्तिहार से Well, with me this evening, I have King's Counsel, uh, former Solicitor General, India's topmost jurist, Harish Salve, with me. Uh, Mr. Salve, you must have been watching the situation, you know, as far as the Kejriwal case and Likagate case is concerned. Uh, first, uh, how are you seeing this case? I mean, are you, it's a bit of a setback in the Supreme Court today for Arvind Kejriwal. He's not getting any immediate relief. What are the issues which emerge legally and otherwise? Um, uh, I must start by telling you I have some degree of familiarity with the case. I have appeared for the, uh, I got bail for the um, officer of Ricardo Perno who was arrested by the ED. Uh, but let's stay with facts in public record. I'm not surprised as a lawyer that uh, at the outcome of the case because of uh, what is in public domain in the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in the Sisodia case. So I'm hardly surprised that uh, the court uh, has issued notice and will hear the ED. And um, I think it's a good message that nobody is above the law. Uh, a 
person who skips summons eight times, whoever he may be, uh, has to be viewed dimly, purely as a matter of, um, of, of a judicial approach to grant of bail. Because uh, who, the basis of our constitution, however high you may be, the law, law is above you. If each of us were to become judges in our own cause and decide whether we will or will not obey a summon or whether we will or will not obey an order of the court, then we are heading to anarchy. So we start from there and uh, it has gone on predictable lines as far as I'm concerned. There is no, as far as the court is concerned, you can make whatever political allegations you want to make. But as far as the court is concerned, there is no decision in this entire string of cases, which has really taken me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Salve, uh, the argument, first of all, has been made very strongly here that approvers mean nothing. Approvers amount to nothing. Even if the approver is someone you have worked with very closely, who is aware of the complexities of the case, they are saying approvers mean nothing. You can put pressure on anyone and make him or her an approver in the eyes of the law. That's a political argument made. That seems to be about 75% of the argument so far that the arm is presenting of, uh, in, in Mr. Kejriwal's defense. It is true that... Uh, the court would view the evidence of an approver carefully. But that would firstly be at the stage where he's being made an approver. Secondly, Arunab, unlike uh, cases which are now argued on TV channels and on Twitter, in a court of law, the court would first see on what the approver has said. Let me, I don't know what the approvers have said in this case, but let me give you a, a theoretical example. Suppose the approver said, I met Mr. X at his house on so-and-so date at 9 o'clock, which he earlier denied doing. And now he produces a WhatsApp message in a second phone, which he had not disclosed, which shows that he met the person. Will you discredit that evidence merely because he's an approver? If the approver says, okay, earlier I told you I have no idea. Now I'm telling you, here is a check, here is a bank account, here is a trace of funds which move from account A to account B. You go and see that the funds have indeed moved from account A to account B. You still discredited it just because earlier he had lied and said, I have nothing to do with this. So, you know, these generalizations that don't believe approvers. Yes, why does a person become an approver? Your first attempt is to run from the law. When that doesn't work, you realize the options against you are closed. Nirav Moody's sister has turned approver. Did she turn approver day one? No. Why did she support him in... Uh, in Trying to launder his money, she did as a sister. When when the heat got too much, she said, okay, I turn approver. Because I don't want to go down for somebody else. Yeah. So there are reasons and reasons why people turn approvers. And this kind of a broadside saying, just because somebody is an approver and made one statement earlier, now he's making another statement, is something which the court, I'm sure, considered and dealt with. Uh, the other argument, Mr. Salve, is that Mr. Mr. Kejriwal says, he is not directly involved in the framing of the policy. The argument no. being made is simply uh, a little bit like saying, no. yes, there was a policy. The policy led to somebody profiting. The state exchequer did not gain much. Private people profited. Yes, somebody made 338 crores. But it means, it doesn't mean that I'm corrupt. Because there's no paper to prove that I was the one who was signing off on the decision. It doesn't matter. If there are any number of people who come later and say I as chief minister had direct role in it because I'm a chief minister without portfolio, I don't sign off on things and hence there is no question of personal culpability. So uh, Arnab, you, uh, there's one thing which I've noticed I was watching once I was watching in fact your channel. Uh, let's not confuse between two independent offenses. Every time you hear the argument, where is the money trail? There are two independent offenses. One is corruption, the other is money trail. Corruption, prima facie, which the Supreme Court found in Sisodia is, to put it in one sentence, a 70 crore license fee, you charge 70 crore license fee, and you justified increasing the wholesale margin from 5 to 12%, saying that they have to pay 70 crore license fee. But in 10 months, those people who paid 70 crore license fee earned 500 crores. So they said, Prima Fasi, you acted in a manner which caused a loss to the state and a gain to a private person. That's corruption. Was this policy done 
it, it was a far-reaching policy. Was the decision taken without the involvement of the chief minister? Is, is for anybody to know? I, I, it's hard to believe, but uh, we don't know what the truth is. So it, the second is, has the money which was taken as a kickback been found? It may never be found. But does it? It may somebody who's being hauled up purely for moving funds around may get off the hook if the money is not found. But somebody who is guilty of corruption, because don't forget, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is not necessary to prove somebody received a bribe. It is enough if you show somebody acted in a dishonest manner. In the Sisodia. Sisodia, Chief Minister. All, in all the Sisodia all the case, in the, in the Justice policy. Kanna. In the, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In if the, you notice, the, if you read in, in that the, carefully, in the Manish Sisodia bail order, Perry says there is no trail of money. The so, para seven Prima of the Supreme Court corruption. judgment, which denied bail to Sisodia. No, in, in para seven uh, of the Supreme Court judgment denying bail to Sisodia, it says, and I quote: "A conspiracy was entered vis-à-vis -vis the new excise policy to enable supersized profits for wholesale distributors in return for kickbacks." and bribes. Now the conspiracy part is understood. Kejriwal's point is that the bribe has not got into my bank account. Need not. You be. have no specific evidence to prove Need that the bribe came to me. Maybe he got nothing. That's the point they're repeating ad nauseum. So th that's the that's the money laundering part. If he that's has pocketed the money that becomes laundering money. In fact he for him it would not even be laundering. He'd be the prime recipient of the bribe. So let me just explain to you and for your viewers, Arunab, let's get this clear. A is a government servant, B is a, B is a businessman, B corrupts A by giving him a hundred thousand rupees or a million rupees or a million dollars. B has taken a, A has taken a bribe from B. That's not money laundering. He has received the bribe. That's his offense. You may be able to show that A has Commit, a has done something to benefit B. And the law presumes that if you have acted dishonestly to benefit a private interest, money must have been paid. The reason why the law went beyond physical bribes to acts of dishonesty which benefit private interests is because common course of human conduct, you would do it only for a bribe. The money laundering comes later. So A receives a million dollars from B for doing an illegal act. A then gives it to C and C who has had nothing to do with this corrupt transaction takes A's money and puts it in a property in his own name. C is giddy of laundering because what he's trying to do is he's trying to change the color of that money. So money laundering is different from corruption and corruption with the allegation which lies at the door of Mr. Sisodia. I assume that's the same allegation being taken that the, the chief minister and the deputy chief minister conspired to end, make this policy. If the chief minister says he had no role to play in a policy is of this magnitude. Is conspiracy a charge? Yeah, is, is, is conspiracy a charge, Mr. Salve, for the ED or for the CBI to look at? Both. In a case such as this, I'm reading. Both. Yes. Let me, let me give both? you uh, where, where it comes from. The allegation is Mr. Chief Minister, Mr. Deputy Chief Minister and one or two ministers conspired with a group of businessmen to come up with a policy very favorably, which will be very favorable to a group of people who will raise monies out of it. That's your allegation of corruption. Who all collaborated in that act, civil servants who were parties to that decision making are all conspirators of the act of corruption. Then comes the laundering. The money is, as the allegation runs, the money was paid by the wholesalers who made the bribe. They paid X, X paid Y, Y paid Z. Somebody had given an advance for some election that got set off. That's the trail of money. Everybody who has touched that money and allowed it to move becomes guilty of an offense for money laundering. He may have no knowledge of where the money came from, just knowing that it, it has come from some naughty business in Delhi. But he helps in passing the money around. That's money laundering. So let's, let's keep the two separately. Yes, ED is investigating. 
the money laundering aspect. But that these are not, as far as the primary people are concerned, these are not in separate compartments. That's why Supreme Court refused by bail to Sisodia. So, you know, the courts seem to be pretty convinced of the evidence that they have. Uh, what do you think of what the High Court said when it said uh, that there is prima facie, the evidence is incriminating qua the petitioner? See, I I'll tell you, the law that was under the Code of Criminal Procedure, yeah, under our Code of Criminal Procedure, the police cannot grant you pardon. A pardon is granted by executive clemency. Approvership is where the police takes a witness to a magistrate. The police officer steps out. He confesses to the magistrate. He tells the magistrate. The magistrate has to be satisfied. Prima facie that this is a genuine confession. He is being contrite. He is coming out with the truth. And taking him rather than prosecuting him. Taking him as a witness for the prosecution. Is... Will this going to help prosecuting a larger uh, group? For example, I mean, in theory, if Sisodia turned approver against Kejriwal, maybe the court may not allow it because he will say both of you, public interest demands both of you be prosecuted. But if a smaller fry in, in, in the whole process says, okay, I'll come out to the truth and tell you the truth. The court is the final arbiter of should the person be given pardon, treated as an approval, approver so that he comes on as a witness to prosecute the main people in the conspiracy. Now, these are judicial decisions. These are judicial decisions. These are not taken in the ED head office. ED may agree to treat somebody as an approver, but it is the court who has to approve. That's why I think that some uh, Delhi High Court took uh, some umbrage of the vocabulary used against uh, the approver's statements. But, but then, you know, if the court also, if the Supreme Court tomorrow does not deny, does not, uh, does not give bail to Arvind Kejriwal in this case, look at the situation that we have here, Mr. Salve. The court does not give, uh, does not give bail to Kejriwal. Suppose the Supreme Court also takes the view that, yes, there is a fair amount of evidence and we cannot, at this stage, disregard the evidence. And if the evidence, as the High Court says, is incriminating, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Arvind Kejriwal, then the Supreme Court is unlikely to take a, take a different view. In that case, what's the lookout? I mean, Delhi is not going to have a chief minister. We're going to run the government from Tihar jail. This is what the people of Delhi are looking at. And what kind of precedent is that setting for the rest of the country? Well, uh, I have only two comments to make, one serious and one numerous. If you remember back in the day, we used to have uh, the Yes Minister and the Yes Prime Minister series which showed the battle between the civil servants and the politicians. And, and the civil servants, those were British civil servants, always maintained that the government would run much better if the minister stayed at home. So, <laughs> will Delhi run without a chief minister? I don't know. I mean, is, is the chief minister superfluous in Delhi? I don't know. Uh, secondly, I have heard this argument that there is no constitutional bar. Well, there is something called the silence of the constitution. Did the constitution makers ever contemplate that a popular leader who is found prima facie guilty of a serious offense Import, next. would be in would be denied bail and would yet want to govern the state? I don't think the founding fathers ever thought of this. That's why they didn't provide a detail. Of course, on conviction you lose your seat. But what should be the position in the interim is a matter of personal conscience and propriety. I think you do throw it back well there. Mr. Salve, you've given some very solid perspective uh, on this case. And uh, let's see what happens after the 23rd. Matter is going procedurally. But uh, this gives us some fresh perspective on this. Harish Salve, thank you very much as always for throwing light on this with me this evening. Thank you so much. That's Harish Salve, ladies and gentlemen. I would consider him the last word. He's speaking on issues of constitutionality, but also tonight he's spoken on issues of political propriety and morality. On the political debate this evening, Ajay Alok versus uh, Anmol Pawar, BJP versus AAP. Uh, see Anmol, uh, there are serious issues involved. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously, even the Supreme Court will look at the evidence that is available and decide how to respond. If the case did not have any merit, 
then it would not even proceed procedurally right now. Uh, and you just heard Mr. Salve as well. You can hear me, Anmol. So, you know, last time I told you the High Court is pretty much convinced yes, about yes, the I evidence against well. Kejriwal. Time has come for you to take a decision because, because public sympathy is not going to build up if the courts aren't going to support you. And the courts are showing no intention of supporting you yet. Arnab, uh, the fact is that Mr. Kejriwal is not named in the ECIR, which in uh, criminal jurisprudence is FIR. No charge sheet has been filed. Even the trial has not commenced. There is no corroborative evidence. And Mr. Salve forgot to inform the viewers that approvers come into scene when there is dearth of evidence. There are hundreds of judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court, while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh, categorically said that there is no trace of proceeds of money. Not a single penny has been recovered in the last two years after more than 500 raids. And the second point, I was hearing him very patiently. And the second point which he uh, failed to inform the viewers is that the constitution framers did not even contemplate that there will be a so-called premier agency enforcement directorate which will work at the behest of Bharatiya Janta Party which will work as a frontal organization of the central government and without a shred of evidence put a popular three times sitting chief minister See, all of this is not working Delhi model of governance all of this is not getting you any sympathy even this was not contemplated no, no, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Arnab, the L louder, people of please. Delhi I can't are with us. Today. See, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Ajayalok is on the debate the right now. Of, see, if the, the courts still Delhi now, my point us, being, uh, Anmol, they Anmol, can see the Anmol, designs Anmol, of Anmol, 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 Yeah, uh, see, Anmol, it, Anmol, I'll tell you one thing. The... The, you have thrown everything at the at at the court, every piece of evidence. Why are the courts not moved, Ajay Alok? The fact is, viewers, if there was any observation from the court till now saying that the situation Kejriwal has been dealt with unfairly, there isn't enough evidence, he should not have been arrested, the arrest was not necessary, or question the timing of the arrest, then the sympathy could have moved your way, but it's going in the opposite direction, Ajay Alok. Not at all, Arnav, not at all. Arnav, the problem here is we used to know that there is a difference between Loud. thief and a politician. But a new chronology has been framed by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal that the politician can be a bigger thief than the normal thief. And it's a shameless blot on a democracy that a chief minister is not resigning even after being in jail for almost a month now. Within six days it will be a month and he has not resigned. So he has created a new benchmark in Indian democracy. Look, there are four P's in corruption. There are four important P's in corruption which a chief minister can enjoy and easily enjoy. First is power, preference, privilege and payment. And he has enjoyed everything. He had the power. He had the preference whom to give the legal contract to. He had the privilege of doing that and he had received the payment. The kickbacks are there, the, the evidence are there, everything is being nailed and then also this arm Arajak party shamelessly defends K. Arvind Kejriwal. And in the process, they have lost the entire credit with credibility of theirs. Can I of course, they have been losing it for the last two and a half years. Because they are in over of corruption. The new, new ideas of corruption keeps on propping them. And look, this is only one. It's one, the liquor scam is only one of them. Now there's a gel board scam, which CBI is already investigating. There's an inferior medicine scam, which is also being investigated. There's a knockery scam, which is also being investigated. Say everything, ye to kuch nahi hai ji. Hame phasaya ja raha hai ji. Hum to aise nahi hai ji. Kattar imandar hai hum ji. Aray ji, to wahi ji kehta tha. बिल्कुल है जी कट्टर ईमानदार है कट्टर देशभक्त है आपकी तरह देश बेच नहीं रहे हम अरे कट्टर बेईमान है आप लोग ये रहे आपके कट्टर बेईमान है आप लोग कट्टर बेईमान ईमानदारी से आपका दूर दूर तक संबंध नहीं है करोड़ का घोटाला किया ईमानदारी से दूर दूर तक का संबंध नहीं है आप लोग उनकी आंखों में आंखें डाल के पूछो क्यों ने पार्टी में लिया क्यों राज्यसभा में आपने ही बातें अपने ही बातें सुन लिया करो 
पैंसठ साल बाद इस देश में एक ऐसा व्यक्ति आया है बोलते थे अपनी बातें सुनो मुफ्त शर्म आ जाएगी शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा और वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन प्रोवाइड की शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा शर्म के मारे सपनों को पूरा किया है अरे वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन कौन से है विजय नखासी से इट इज एसेंशियल फॉर लीडर्स टू एड्रेस सच इशूज ट्रांसपेरेंटली एंड इफेक्टिवली मेंटेन ट्रस्ट एंड इंटेग्रिटी Gurleen Kaur says everyone on please Gurleen Kaur says everyone can be on please aap should stop showing kejriwal as a martyr from whom will Srinivas Reddy Gondesi says kejriwal who once projected himself as a crusader against corruption is himself allegedly charged for the liquor scam he has no moral responsibility to hold his constitutional post as chief minister it appears to be lot of people moved by the views of harish salve earlier today and even anmol should take a little bit of you know have a little bit of respect for the views that people like harish salve put your way sometimes it comes forth as advice you should listen to it Arnab, the question here is I'll now respond arnab i'll respond please wa- anmol you have to learn arnab, to I'll answer respond. questions i am asking a question you answer the question arnab, don't I'll try answer. to make so moto comments listen What? No, no. You don't know the question. You can't answer without listening to the question. You listen to my question and then ask. Listen to me very, very clearly out here. The question is: Why was the Supreme Court not listening to you? The Supreme Court was not listening to you. Your lawyer Abhishek Manu Singhvi tried to get a shorter date. He said the same things that you said. The petitioner is not named in the ECIR. There were 16 statements, 10 by Sharad Reddy, 6 by others. One statement becomes positive. The same arguments. There is nothing new. Ajay, do you get my point? Every single point that is made by Anmol Pawar is a simple summary of the points made by Abhishek Manu Singhvi. My question to you is: Why was the Supreme Court not moved by the arguments that were made by your lawyer Abhishek Manu Singhvi? Why was the Supreme Court not moved? Why did they not give a Because shorter date? Why did they decline Singhvi's argument? Why are you not getting relief from the courts? Arnab, because uh, they think they have the propriety, right to propriety that how uh, how a faster date cannot be given. Because Secondly, by virtue of CM being a CM, he thinks that he can surpass the law. The and giving Court political statements in the court, notice. not be, the matter is to be heard by 29 no legal personnel, and the enforcement directorate has to file a reply within two weeks. Let him, let him, it was not heard let on him, merits up. today. It will be heard on 29th of this coming month. And the fact is that same bench so, passed uh, similar observations while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh. But the case, when it reached the Honorable Supreme Court on 2nd of March 2024, the entire case was demolished by the Honorable Supreme Court. The observations were made that if the Enforcement Directorate fights the case on merits, okay, then the Honorable yes. Supreme Court will be bound to make observations as per the mandate of Section 46 of PMLA Act, stating that even private misdemeanor offence is not being made out. Who's not? And they also very categorically Suena. stated Suena. that no proceeds of money has been traced. and not a single penny has been recovered and i think it is for mr alok to answer your lawyer that has already your bond. lawyer has already said it in mr. the court salve very patiently he arnab arnab mr mr salve just said that whatsoever amount has been reached to whosoever person the ed must investigate and that is a part of money laundering 60 crore rupees has been traced to bharatiya janata party which has been given as bribe by p sharad reddy now why is it that enforcement directorate is not arresting uh, jp nadda ji why double standards 
If there's a clear so proof, you if the data is, is published guns? by the SBI on the direct Why you are jumping guns? Stick to your Arvind Kejriwal. If the trace of money has Stick been... Stick to the biggest uh, corrupt Arvind Kejriwal. Then why is it that ED is not arresting the officials of Bharatiya Janata Party? The money trail has been established. Why such double And your lawyer in the court said, there, where is the money we have spent it in the Goa polls? This is the statement made by your lawyer. Where is the money we have spent it in the go uh, in the go in the, the Goa polls? And that's why that's why Raghav Chaudhary is not coming back. क्या बात कर रहे हो? जरा law bites का पर देख लो डेर law bites का जवाब देंगे आप के वकील ने बोला जवाब दे पाएंगे आप शम्ता है आप में जवाब देने की सवाल की मैं क्या दूंगा जवाब आपको देने दे इसको बेशर्म में आप लोग उन्होंने कहा है कि बात भी अगर एक ही पैसा किसी के पास जाता है अनमोल 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 इस वक्त तो जवाब आपको देना है क्योंकि मैं मैं देखिए एक मिनट एक मिनट अनमोल अनमोल एक मिनट अनमोल मेरी बात सुनिए मैं अगला ट्वीट पढ़ रहा हूँ एक मिनट अनमोल ओके ओके सिवा कुमार दत्तू तड़ेपली सेस एवरीबडी ऑन प्लीज Government can can't be run from jail. The Constitution did not create explicit prohibition, keeping the draconian British rule in mind. Hence, it doesn't mean a normal civic life. Jail ruling can be allowed. Customary precedence is to resign. Customs are part of law. Absolutely, I I agree with you, Shiva Kumar ji. I think the conventions are created by the way the political parties respond in situations such as this. And Dolly Bhatia says, "Never seen such shameless liars of our def def defending the indefensible." Anmol, leave all this aside. If the Supreme Court also says, like the High Court has said, that there are prima facie strong evidence against Kejriwal, what will you do then? I don't think the Supreme Court is going to view the evidence any differently from the way the High Court has looked at it. If the Supreme Court also makes the same observations against Arvind Kejriwal that there is prima facie evidence that he has been leading a conspiracy, what will you do? Yes. Louder. No. What? What if? What if the Honorable Supreme Court says that on our directions a data was published and 60 crore rupees were transferred from the alleged kingpin of the liquor scam P. Sharad Reddy to Bharatiya Janata Party? Go and book Mr. J. P. Nadda. Then what will happen? Then what will you say? How long will you avoid answering questions? How long will you? How long? Uh, let Ajay respond to that. It's a. And how long I mean, will the BJP spokesperson will how avoid answering? How long can your party stop answering question. questions? It's been more than 25 days. Is J P Nadda the mastermind of Liquor Gate or is Arvind Kejriwal the mastermind of Liquor Gate? Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? No, no, no. Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? No, no. J P. Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? J P Nadda didn't form the. Who is the mastermind? Dalali diya Bharatiya Janata Party ko. Jawab de na ye. Jawab de ye aaj desh ko. Oh, now you accept there was a Liquor Gate. Earlier you were not expecting. Why sir? Because you have not been told. We are not expecting. We are accepting. We will yeah, expose each and every spokesperson of BJP. JP Nadda took the policy back. What expose? You are. Then you why did JP Nadda take 60 crore bribe? You don't have any shame left. 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 You don't have सुप्रीम कोर्ट टेक्स डिसीजन ऑन इट And if the Supreme Court also says that there is prima facie evidence against your leader Arvind Kejriwal, then you have to answer very differently. You cannot then start attacking the Supreme Court order. Also, no, no. your options would have run out. I thank you, Anmol and Ajay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now moving on to a very, very important subject, which is the letter I have in my hand for the first time. A coalition of 21 retired judges from the Supreme Court. and high courts have written this letter to the chief justice of india they have expressed serious concern over the mounting efforts in their view by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through orchestrated pressure misinformation and public criticism they allege that the motives behind these actions as being driven by narrow political agendas and personal gains aiming to erode public trust in the judicial system 
Now, viewers, is there an attempt to undermine the judiciary? The Supreme Court is coming under major controversy repeatedly. And there are people who believe that there is a certain lobby of four or five or six lawyers supported by a group of the media who try to target and embarrass the judiciary. And though, of course, the judiciary is never going to admit it, it is possible prone at least to being, I mean, if not influenced, it can get affected. Its judgments may not be affected. But the idea is that let's put pressure on the judiciary. Let's undermine the judiciary. Let's get articles written. Uh, let the lobby of the media work against the judiciary and hope that builds considerable pressure on the Supreme Court judges. Now, what is important about today's letter, Sohail and Kapil are joining me right now. What is important about today's letter are the signatories. You see this controversy, Sohail has been brewing for a while. Is there an attempt at putting pressure on the judiciary? But now it's very different. It's not just citizens. It's not eminent citizens, ex-bureaucrats, or just top jurists. Former Supreme Court judges themselves are writing to Chandrachur. Former High Court judges and Supreme Court judges are writing to Justice Chandrachur 